and we're live we are live back at it again uh welcome everybody to jys live where we're bringing you the latest topics and discuss really what matters most to you your business i'm your host aaron morellis and uh, with me is jonathan wiseman business owner entrepreneur industry disruptor e-commerce guru i mean the list could go on man Dude, but keep it up bro I know, right but I, I'm, <laughs> I i like calling you the data don't lie guy so i'm i think i'm gonna end with that one because that's just that's always my favorite but how you doing today man man i'm I'm grind, man. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, dude. Again with it, but back's better though, right? Since the last time we back is good. Okay. But my neighbor Rick Garcia and my good friend Greg Lyons, who's also my insurance agent. If you need a auto insurance, get a hold of Greg. There's the plug, dude. He, I'm not, man. I'm gonna get your ass <laughs> this week, and uh, they got me faded last night, and uh, I'm paying for it today, so drinking water drinking water staying hydrated but i'm good man i'm good i'm glad to be here it's friday it's a beautiful day i'm blessed loving life and uh loving doing this man i really do this to give back to our audience whether they send us comments now and we catch them in time make sure you notify us where's tight and then you know i just i want to help people grow their business we are moving this uh to a weekly show so that we can be there for our audience and when I say our audience, I don't care if I have one person viewing. Mm -hmm. If there is one person that I could give one little nugget to, it, it, I mean, straight up, we're gonna, and we're making them shorter. They're gonna be 30 to 40 minutes instead of an hour to two hours long as they have been. I wanna make them quick, get in there, get niche with it, get some answers and get the fuck out and let people get back to work or lunch or whatever it is they're doing. Um, but if I can have one person in this audience take one nugget from this podcast right then we're serving our purpose and so that's what's up with jay weiss that's what we're doing that's what jay weiss live is love it man um so like he was saying during our show at any time if you have a question you want to contribute to the conversation you want to join the discussion drop a line in the comments uh you know you can either shoot us a message or like i said drop us a line and uh you'll be joined in and today correct me if i'm wrong we're gonna be talking about administrative setup is that correct yes i did say that all right perfect and uh but before we get into that let's talk about some new news let's talk about something that just happened at um i've never had the the opportunity to go to it the google marketing live conference i'm sure it's just a whole bunch of people like me a bunch of nerds walking around talking we're going this year buddy you're going we're going this year well i'm taking you we're going this all right we got that documented on video it's on it's on tape take it we going this year we're traveling so so at at this conference google said they're going to be trying to help businesses and i quote hawk their wares with a new squared shape promoted pin in Google Maps. And this is gonna be denoting small and medium sized businesses. And really the point of this, they're saying is this square shaped color pen, right? Is gonna be eye catching to help businesses possibly get more clicks as users are browsing the map. So let's talk about that, man. Well, why do you, why do you, I mean, this is this is new, this came out of nowhere. Yeah, this just came out in the last week or so. But you think this is in response to, to COVID? What do you, what do you think? I, I COVID is, kind of igniting all kinds of stuff right and, and let me kind of you said that real fast and i understand it but to dummy that down and simplify it basically what google is doing for small businesses when you typically go to google maps and you see a pin on there the little round pin dropper looking thing right so what they're doing now and those typically if you just go pull up a map without searching anything specific it's going to highlight all the big companies all of the big businesses, even though a ton of them are going out of business now, and <laughs> we'll talk about that on another show. Uh, man, everybody's filed bankrupt. All right, let me not get off yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not really funny, but uh, we'll talk about that another day. Um, what Google is doing for small business owners like myself is um, they're giving you the opportunity to put a square on that map, okay. which so instead of that little dropper, the circle, whatever the fuck you want to call it, they're actually for small businesses. And right now, I think it's free until September. So if you own a business, go look. What was it called? What's the legit name for it? Uh, promoted Pins. That's what they're so called. So go look up Google's Promoted Pins. Right now, it's free, I think, until September. And what it basically does, I haven't even done it for myself yet. This shit's so new. I'm actually, it's on our task list. It's on our active, uh, what is it? Click, click up. up. Click up to get it done today. Um, 
that's something we can talk about that's not on here is it oh yeah we got to get into apps make sure we talk about apps and got administrative it. shit uh because people need to uh, get down with ClickUp um or something similar so google will put a square if you go sign up for this it will put a square on the maps which is kind of it's going to show that look you're not one of these big companies it's like representing small businesses so it's going to put a little square and then it's even going to tell somehow some kind of way i'm not sure i don't know if it's color coordinated or what but and maybe if you hover over it it will pop up what type of business you're all or what industry you're in so it's really something new they're doing for small businesses i think it's dope as shit and, and if it does happen to do with all of this COVID stuff that's going on, it's about time that small businesses are getting recognized and getting the love right. and that the big companies like Google are, you know, recognizing us and allowing us to stand out from these big people. And so if it came from C19, Hey, something good came from it. And you know, I always try to see the good and the bad. So yeah. let's say this is one of those things. Excellent, man. Is my audio okay? All right, I know sounding it's different. Good. Honey without. of a voice, sounding good, man. Shit. Sounding good. Well, I haven't uh, <laughs> used, uh, when we don't do the headphones, it's hard. I can't hear myself, so I just want to make sure. Always got to hear yourself talk. I, and I think this is really, I think this is kind of cool because um, when you consider how large this, this announcement is, they talked about what is 150 countries that you can get, that this, I mean, this is a big initiative that they're rolling out, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's worldwide. They said 150 countries, and there's how many that are set up right now? Is it already on all of them, or is it like 15 of them? I think it's... I know it's like the U.S., the yeah. Netherlands, Canada, U.K., um, but yeah, it's, it's about to get sick. Yeah, and, and people, they're actually letting people to monitor these smart campaigns uh, to check on the performance, so... <laughs> Well, and that's, you know, when it talks about performance, do you think they're going to somehow integrate geofencing into that? That could be a possibility, man. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. At some point, you know, they start mailing them devices, plug this in in your store, and then it will basically read your mobile phone when you walk into the store and be like, all right, this person's been here. And then when you leave, you retarget to that client or uh, you can send them a text message. I'm sure it's going to be some type of paid for service. This isn't even out yet. I'm just assuming there's some geofencing stuff out right. and retargeting with it. But I think that what this is going to evolve to or allude to is more ways for them to make money, right? So right now it looks amazing for us, but at some point it's going to get to where I think that they're going to give business owners the opportunity to retarget or remarket to the people that walk into their stores with some type of device, you know, send them a text message. You just left our store, leave us a five-star review on Google, click right. here. Or you left our store, how was your experience? Or, you know, hey, you drove by our store within a half mile radius. Were you looking for us? We're over here. So different types of geofencing type marketing opportunities, I definitely think are going to come from that one way or another. Definitely, and I think this is something we got to keep our eye on, especially over the next couple of months. So. And everybody out there needs to keep their eye on it too, because it's some dope shit. And if you own a business, go sign up for it. We're doing it today. And if you got any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. More than happy to uh, to to connect with you individually on that. Hey, we got I? we got a couple people saying hi. By the way, Jonathan, we got Rose Marie saying hello, and he, Jonathan will be right back. <laughs> And he's back. We had a couple people saying hi. Clint Starrett. What's up, hey, Clint? Buddy. And uh, Rose Marie. What's up, girl? Yeah, everybody. Rose Marie, always showing love. Appreciate you, girl. Yeah. Hey, guys. How are y'all? And uh, so we got that out of the way, man. Let's let's talk about administration. Let's talk right. about the administrative stuff. Unless you have anything else to add. Any nah, man. I mean, let's let's make it quick. And uh, I'm telling you, Rick Garcia. It's going down this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so and also, I just saw Lori Ortiz pop up. Lori, I want to thank you for uh, that. Thank you, Lori. You know what I'm talking about. Appreciate you, Lori Ortiz. Um, yeah, let's move right into, uh, let's do it. Perfect, man. What are we doing? So, first thing you do when setting up a business, from what I know, this is where I know to start. You got to set up your business entity. Is that right? Yes. You, at least a DBA. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's get and, into it. I mean, you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Thank you, brother. You know, it's administrative setup is so important when it comes to a business. And there's a lot of people that don't do it. It's, it's the work. It's the tedious, monotonous shit that nobody wants to do. Yeah. So it normally never gets done. <laughs> 
And so you either have to do it yourself or hire somebody to do it in-house or third-party contract it out so that it gets done and it gets done right. But if you set up certain processes in place or you use certain third-party apps or softwares, whatever you want to call them, uh, a lot of this will do it kind of automated for you, the micromanaging of a lot of stuff, or make it streamlined so it's a lot easier for you. Uh, but, I mean, it's – and we'll get into some of the details in a little bit, but I've there's, you know – if you do implement it and you follow it, you're going to be able to enhance your performance five times, 10 times, 50 times. And and I think you said something actually interesting. Let me go back on this. Okay. Do you even have to set up a business entity? So, well, I think that, and Colleen's gonna kill me. Uh, if you need somebody <laughs> to set up, Colleen Meagle, if you need a lawyer to set up your stuff for you, Colleen Meagle is my corporate attorney, handles all my stuff. She's absolutely amazing. She's a sweetheart. Uh, can you go tag her in the comments? Okay. Uh, give her a link down there, please. Um, hit her up. She actually does something for everybody that follows our show, everybody that's uh, with, you know, that comes in under the Jay Weiss marketing umbrella. She has what typically charges thousands of dollars for. Every single person that comes in that mentions Jay Weiss for nine ninety five, she'll set up your uh, your corporation, your LLC. Um, well, your LLC is your business entity, so she'll set up like an LLC for you. She'll give you a operating agreement, take care of your EIN number, basically the big package. Uh, definitely give her a call if you're looking to set up a business. Do it uh, legally correct. She'll handle it, and she's given all of my people. It's really going to be for Jay Weiss University when we launch that later on this year. Anybody that's a member of the Jay Weiss University is going to have access to her at these discounted rates, but I've talked to her. Anybody that comes in under and mentions Jay Weiss, you get to take advantage of these specials. So if you need that set up, Colleen Meagle, post her in the comments, please. Um, she's gangster, love her to death. Hi, Colleen. And uh, let's move on. What was the question? No, the question is that right there. So you don't maybe you don't have to start with one, but look. well, so there's at least a DBA, right? Okay. Uh, a DBA stands for doing business as most people know that it's also known as a fictitious name. And y'all don't quote me on the shit. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. I'm just going off the top of my head for stuff that I know related to business that I've done in the past. So you might fact check something. I might be off a little bit. Hey, fuck it. That's how. I mean, it's real life. It's real business. That's how it is. So. Uh, I'm just speaking from my knowledge, so don't hold me uh, 100% to the legalities of stuff. But setting up a DBA, basically what it allows you to do is do business as, I mean, that's what DBA is, doing business as, a different name other than yourself. So if, you know, I'm Johnny Wiseman, but I don't want my business, I'm a burger joint, and I don't want it called Johnny Wiseman's, mm -hmm. uh, I want it called Burger Joint then I need to at least go get a DBA that says it's called Burger Joint. That might be a good name for someone. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry, man, my mind's out there. So um, it, it's going to allow somebody to do business as something other than their name. Okay. However, if you aren't set up as a true legal business entity as far as a corporation or sole proprietor or LLC, um, then you are still going to be personally liable. So a DBA will let you go set up, you know, whatever this is, Texas spring water. This is my company now. Yeah. Um, but so you're doing business as this company name. However, if, this water poisons somebody and they sue you, you're personally liable. So they can go after you personally under a DBA. So a DBA should be, you know, very infant stages of your business, just barely getting started out. Or, you know, I typically get a DBA and an LLC almost in the same day um, when I launch businesses. And you can get a DBA online. You can get it uh, at the local, uh, what is it, the secretary, not the secretary of state, the uh, uh, county clerk's office. Um, you can get it for a county or you can get it statewide. There's a couple of different ways to um, get those. Uh, but typically what you do then is the next step is to move into an actual uh, business entity uh, that protects you, which I typically get LLCs um, or based off what uh, Colleen or my accountant tell me that we need to do for business purposes. Then we start moving into corporations. And, and 
from my perspective, what the real difference is, so there's corporations and partnerships and sole proprietors and LLCs and, you know, uh, probably three or four that I'm missing. Um, what those basically do is help you protect yourself personally okay. if any shit goes down um, from being, you know, sued. Uh, there's a lot that can go on and go wrong in business. And I've had a lot of stuff happen. I've been in plenty of suits and lawsuits in my time uh being in the bar business and club business and i mean people got beat up in the parking lot like they left the club got drunk somebody did something beat each other up in the parking lot and i got sued for six figures and i got stuck in a lawsuit for years and um you know and that's why you gotta have insurance right insurance covers your ass for that and i know that's one of the things that we're going to talk about that today is. so anyhow getting into the corporation um dude if i start rambling just cut me off bro. no you keep going <laughs> give me another 30 seconds then i'll cut you off all right cool so uh dba is a way for you to do business under a different name right and then you need to get into a corporation or some type of entity set up i typically do llc's um so that you are protected that llc is going to protect you from personal liabilities and that's what it's for is this something the legal zoom could help out with there are other softwares or excuse me not softwares but services online out there or yeah there's a handful of them uh legal zoom is one of them and it's kind of like legal zoom is the most entry level that you could use to get in there i know colleen's gonna cringe when i say that um because they're very generalized so if you only have five hundred dollars and there's no way for you to squeeze another five hundred dollars at least do that like bare minimum do that so you're protected right uh and really it's i think it's around three hundred dollars you can even do it yourself and file it with the state yourself you go download the paperwork from the government website um you fill it out you send it in you pay the state fees i think it's like 295 somewhere right around 300 bucks and you can do it yourself. Uh, LegalZoom typically charges you the other $200 for them to do all the filing for you. And there's right. a lot of other stuff that goes along with it to make sure you're not missing anything. Uh, on the other hand, Colleen does it for a thousand uh, for JY's people. She doesn't do that for everybody. So, and I don't know the legal disclaimers. I'm not speaking for her, whatever, whatever. Uh, she's going to kill me for this. Um, but you know, for like nine ninety five or whatever, she's going to give people, she'll file the LLC, she'll take care of the tax ID number, which is the EIN number. Uh, and then she's also going to do a operating agreement that is going to, uh, which you really need to have within a business. And she's doing all that shit for less than a thousand bucks. So it would be very wise uh, if somebody's looking to do this to call her. But yes, definitely. DBAs cost 30 bucks at the county clerk's office which you can go get and just drive up there in 20 minutes, you can get a DBA. And the good thing about a DBA too that I, I didn't mention is you can go open up a bank account other than your personal bank account so okay. that you can start to separate your funds uh, when it comes to business. It, as simple as mowing yards, you know, I don't care what your age is, if you start a lawn mowing service and you start mowing yards, you don't want that money, uh, your income or your expenses funneling through your personal accounts. You need to keep that shit separate. So a DBA, um, will be something that allows you to go set up a separate business account and get things started financially. Excellent. And you, you hit the second point, which was, you know, banking setup. So once you get, you know, we talked, if you want to cover maybe a little bit more on banking, what do you got? Um, sure. <laughs> but I think, Bank I think you hit everything. Cause if, if, and, but well, I think really driving home, I think the most important thing I think you drove home for there, especially for me is that separation between my personal and my business. I think that's important. Banking and accounting, um, is everything, yeah. uh, when it comes to business that you don't want to commingle funds with your personal account and your business account. You yeah, just don't sure. want to do it. It's, um, at the end of the year, I mean, your accountant's going to be pissed if you have one. Uh, if you do your accounting, your own accounting, it's going to be a freaking headache. You go through every single transaction and separating groceries from gas or, I mean, there's just, you need to have it separate. And, you know, there's been times where it was difficult to separate if, you know, you're getting launched and there's not quite all the money there. It can be difficult to separate those two things, but it has to be done. So the DBA, like I said, will let you get that or LLC, any type of corporation will let you get your own business account. You have to keep it separate. You got to set up uh, all of your banking and then you want to set up your accounting 
obviously your accounting systems um, to monitor the banking and to uh, reconcile with your bank accounts so that you can have a, a visual of exactly what you're doing in your business. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, all your P&Ls, you want to be able to see those. You want to be able to see everything that's on them. So that's what, you know, set up your business bank account, keep it separate from your personal, set up your accounting software, whichever one you use. We use QuickBooks. Um, it is probably the most widely known. So if you're looking for a uh, accounting software, um, there's Patriot software. I hear them doing a bunch of commercials. There's, I guess, Quicken into it is that, into it is QuickBooks, it's, yeah, and then uh, Quicken is another one that's separate. I don't know, maybe that's for personal. Anyhow, I mean, you can go search it. Accounting software, there's plenty of them out there. If you have an accountant, maybe there's one certain that they work with. What you laughing at, Kareem? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you talked about personal. Let's stay on the let's stay on the subject of personal real okay. quick. Um, you know, I, I own I, I own uh, my side consulting company, media company, Dimock Media, and I use my personal phone number. Is that good or bad, man? Do I do I need to have a personal phone? Should I be using my personal phone number? Give it to me straight. Now. You already know the answer to that one. <laughs> I don't have to tell you that. No, uh, do not use your personal number. Okay, There's, tell tell us why. Because you don't want to have people. If you do blow up, you don't want to have people access. Uh, when you go sign up for businesses, you go sign up for different things online, different apps. If your shit gets hacked. Um, you know, your phone goes into plenty of directories where you start getting spam calls. Mm. Uh, you know, you don't want a pissed off customer calling you at two o'clock in the morning, right. yelling you or texting you or whatever. Um, and it also might look a little unprofessional depending on what business you're in. You know, if you're okay. running a retail store and everything goes to your cell phone, and I mean, everybody talks on cell phones, so it's understood. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to call T-Mobile, and I'm just using a name. You don't want to call the T-Mobile cell phone store, and the person, it's also their cell phone, and they're taking personal call. I mean, it's just yeah. ghetto, for lack of a uh, better terminology. My wife's going to kill me for that. Um, but what you should do is set up a hosted number. Okay. There's our, our ghost line hosted number. Hostednumbers.com is where I get mine from. And by the way, these people aren't paying me uh none of them they should be hopefully one day <laughs> they need will a little, need a little logo to hopefully pop up at yeah the right bottom hopefully the one day there. i'll get sponsored by somebody out there um hostednumbers.com is where i get all my ghost lines from yeah uh, for myself as well as all of my clients and i actually have one account where i've got 100 ghost lines in there for all my different clients that we monitor and manage and First thing it does is it, it gives you the opportunity to not have to put out your personal phone number. And that's common sense. We can all come up with a hundred reasons why we don't want our personal number out there. Naturally. Uh, but what really what's better about hosted numbers is, and any other one out there, there's several of them out there, is that you can track the data. So when I run, let's say a pay-per-click campaign, I'm going to put a hosted number specifically on that campaign. I'm not going to put this number anywhere else in a campaign, just on my Google pay-per-click campaign. And then on the website, on the home page, I'm going to have one hosted number. On the contact page, I'm going to have another hosted number. And then if I have a landing page that's like a lead generation page on there, I'm going to have a third hosted number. So that's four phone numbers just between this one website and campaign. So that what I can then do is when I look at my budgets, when I'm marketing and advertising, I can see which phone number is ringing the most. So if I'm running campaigns, I can actually have data visualization to show me exactly, not just what my ROI is. Okay, I spent a hundred bucks to make 200, but it's like, okay, I made 200, 50 of it came from my homepage, 50 came from my contact page, zero came from the Google campaign, but a hundred of it, came from my lead gen page. Mm -hmm. So now next month I know that, well, shit, if the lead gen thing is performing and this certain Google ad isn't, then I'm going to reallocate those funds the following month and then increase my ROI. So that's all when it comes down to uh, analyzing data, A-B testing, and then figuring out, I mean, data tells you everything. So hosted numbers, I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. Okay. Hosted numbers, it gives you that data. Uh, in addition to being able to track, I use it for tracking. The other thing it does is if you miss calls, 
it keeps those numbers so it shows you you miss those calls okay if you have a customer service department uh you can look at the calls and you can listen to them you can actually have those calls recorded so you can make sure your customer service is um spilling right that they've got the right pitch they got the right rebuttals that they're doing what the fuck they need to do that you've taught them to do you can make sure they're teaching your customers right you know what i'm saying so and i'll tell you one thing uh back when i was in sales and even now i actually do it for my customer service when you start playing back somebody that's a customer service rep or a sales rep, you start playing back their calls and let them listen to themselves, it improves their performance. Every single time, bar none. When they start hearing themselves, it improves their performance. I just had a, a conference, a three hour freaking conference yesterday. I won't say any names. <laughs> uh, you know, I was talking to the girls uh, that are our customer service reps and she straight up said she's like man she's like i'm always on my toes because johnny i know that you're i'm always thinking you're listening to me i never and the other chick was like i never know when you're listening to me so i'm always making sure my my pitches are perfect and i'm saying everything right and i'm like cool so this it, it is working and even though i'm not listening to him this week because i've been i've had a crazy week um it is going to improve the performance, but it allows you to uh, not only improve the performance of the people and call the scare, scare tactic if you want, but also allowing them to listen back to their messages so that you can optimize your performance as a business model. Uh, the other thing, if you miss phone calls, it's going to give you a call log of people to call back. The other thing it's going to do is you can then take that data, and this might not be the legally, uh, I'm not saying do this, but then you have all these phone numbers. Well, if you go set up some type of text automation or text remarketing campaigns, you now have, you know, however many phone numbers you're right. paying. You know, at the end of the day, you're paying to get leads, right? If I'm spending whatever number, $100 on Google pay-per-click, and somebody comes to my website, whether they call me, they fill out a form, they click a button, if I'm paying, you know, $10 a lead to get that lead there, I want to collect as much data as I possibly can. And if them calling a hosted number allows me to catch their phone number, then I can retarget to them through a text message campaign. One. Two, I can take that phone number and upload it to my social media campaigns and I can target that person on Facebook directly. So I've got two means right there to target. One, I can call them. Two, I can text them, or three, I can go stick an ad directly in front of them on Facebook through pixel marketing. So collecting that host, you can't, you, you could do it with a cell phone, but it's a lot better to do it through a, a phone line like that. Not to mention, you can listen to them, you can record them, you can track them, you can see how long people are talking, you can see your missed calls, uh, hosted numbers, do ghost lines. It's the way to go. And if you want a free solution, I know Google, was it Google phones, Google Google has some free phone that's similar. Uh, it was free. I've no, you know, I don't know. I have a thing about using free things. I think they're gonna come get you later on, or ask you to pay later, or maybe not have all it's of trap. the <laughs> service. Dude, it, it's hosted numbers is great. I mean, I get to tell my clients, look, bro, you spent six thousand dollars this month on advertising. You had eighty-seven phone calls, and it's like. Well, you didn't get any sales. This hasn't happened, but it's like you didn't get any sales. Well, look, I can see your phone sheet and of 80 calls, 70 of them didn't get answered. Right. So it's not my bad. You know, you need to step up your game with your service or your sales department. I'm delivering the leads. You're not picking up the phone to close them. So it's it's a good thing for me to have, too. But it's also good to just give people ROI, let them know what they're paying per lead. Uh, from my perspective, it does a lot of cool shit. So hosted numbers, phone numbers is the way to go. Perfect, man. Let's move on. Let's uh, let's get into a big one here. Um, before we get into apps, I want you to talk about insurance setup because uh, I know you have a lot to share, a lot of thoughts on that. So uh, when it comes to insurance and getting that set up, let's, let's dive into that. It's, I mean, you know, we were talking about protection earlier. Um, you need to have insurance to protect whatever it is. Just like, you know, your health insurance, your car insurance, your home insurance. You got to have business insurance. And most places to get a lease on a building, you're going to have to have a minimum liability policy. Uh, Matt Morgan, you need insurance. Hit up my boy Matt Morgan if you need some business insurance. Can we get him a plug in the comments? What's up, Matt? Uh, <laughs> you owe me lunch. Um, you know, it's, it's like in here, we've got a lot of money yeah uh, let's not, we'll let's just, not, let's we'll not just disclose the dollar that. figure <laughs> we, we've got a lot of money here in contents yeah and 
if somebody if the place were to burn down or it were to get robbed or somebody kicking a window or a car come driving off the freeway and crashes nobody's going to pay for that shit you're stuck so i need to have insurance to cover that um i also had to have a minimum i think it was a, a million dollar limit uh, liability insurance just before the uh landlord would let me lease these offices hmm. Um, they want general liability. You know, somebody slips and fall. Well, I think slip and fall might actually be a different policy. Uh, you can ask Matt Morgan on that one. Um, but there's, you got to have, you know, specific liabilities to lease a place. Once you have a place, you start building your assets. You want to cover those assets. You know, it's when I take Hector and we go on a video shoot, we're carrying around 10 to 30 grand worth of equipment with us when we go do these shoots. So if something, you know, we're eating lunch, somebody busts out a window or right. he drops a camera on the floor and it breaks and, you know, it's a $5,000 camera or it could be anything. You have to have insurance in place to protect you um, depending on the business model. You know, like when you get into restaurants and bars, which I owned for many years, I mean, Matt Morgan's who took care of all of them, it, you know, it's like slip and fall you got to worry about that in any fucking situation even in your house um, but you get into bars and restaurants and you start talking about liquor liability you have to worry about if people get drunk and get into wrecks you got to worry about not just slip and fall somebody eats something and breaks a tooth it's people fight in the parking lot which has happened to me i mean somebody leaves drunk and dies there's any type of business something bad could possibly happen you have to have insurance just like you do with anything else to cover your ass get it um general liability policies like the bare minimum start in the hundred dollar a month range you know for small businesses it, it's the whole purpose of getting an llc is to kind of protect you personally if you were to get in trouble as an llc you didn't have insurance you got sued uh you would probably have to fold that llc and file bankruptcy with the llc or whatever the legal terms are for that these days if you have insurance, then the insurance is going to pay for your attorneys to protect you or to cover your ass. You don't have to fold that company. If you've been building a company for five years, um, the last thing I want to do is shut down J Weiss marketing because somebody comes in here, slips, busts their ass, breaks their neck, and then I'm screwed. And now I'm out of business and I can't use J Weiss anymore. And I got to go start set up under, you know, a different name. It, it's I lose a lot of money worth of marketing and advertising and building right. and branding and all that other shit. So got to have insurance. That was a long answer. That was good though. Sorry. That was good. So, so we got a few more minutes and uh, I think let's, let's close it out on talking about softwares and apps before we do that though. Okay. I want to jump back to the host of phone number. Okay. Um, on that phone number, the same thing that you need to do for setting up your business address. There is, you don't want to use just like you don't want to use your personal phone. You don't want to use your home address, even oh, if you're right. even yes. if you know you're a home office. Uh, I've had home offices. I've started there. We've all had to start somewhere. Um, get a ghost address uh, for a few reasons. Um, you know, it's like I live in the Sugarland area. I'm officially Missouri City. Uh, it do, I don't care what city I'm in, but some people want to be. They think it's cooler to be in Sugarland than it is in Mo City, or they think it's cooler to have a Houston address because they do business in Houston instead of Sugarland. So you can get a ghost address for your business. Um, I don't suggest PO boxes because PO boxes don't accept a lot of mails. Uh, there's a lot of softwares and apps that don't accept PO boxes. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people and places and things that don't mail to PO boxes or don't consider it a true address. So, um, even like certain, they used to be called mailbox, et cetera, as I think UPS store bought them all out or something, but these little mailbox places, like some of them are set up to where it's a PO box. Others are set up to where it's like a suite number 121, number 122. So if you need to get an address, you're a home office, uh, go get one of these boxes, but try to find one. That's not a, uh, a PO, just make it a suite number and uh, hashtag one Oh one or whatever it is. Um, another option for that is uh co-op locations uh like regis uh i mean honestly before when i was in transitioning when i sold uh, my last two companies in 18 and 2019 i worked out of my house for like what six months we were there hector i mean we worked out of my house for six months i didn't want people knowing my address i mean it was i had to have a few clients come to the house it was <laughs> embarrassing as shit um so regis 
actually i paid uh, i think it was like 100 150 bucks a month and i got to use their address um i got to have a mailbox there it was you know a, a recognizable address it was in the uh town center of sugarland so it looked like a cool location when people would pull it up on the map you know some people knew it was a regis co-op type building but right. many people thought wow he's in these real nice expensive places he's a legit business so that was cool and then if you go that regis route you know if you need to rent a conference room or whatever for a hundred bucks or 200 bucks for the day whatever it was you can do that as well if you do need to meet people so and i mean straight up i mean how long we've been here about a year year and a half i mean we're right at a year well dude we need to go celebrate bro <laughs> yeah let's go have a one year anniversary on me um so for about a six month period, uh, right at a year ago, I mean, I did it myself. So there's there's no shame in that game. You got to do what you got to do. But uh, definitely have a ghost line and then have a hosted uh, uh, physical address as well. And keep in mind uh, that physical address. If you start to get into any marketing, I mean, obviously think you got to go check the mail there, right? If right. You're doing Amazon packages or clients. I don't really. Most of the mail I get here is junk mail anyway. Everything is paperless these days for the most part um but the really the important parts of the address is to uh it comes to credibility if people see a p.o box versus a lit ad uh, a, a legit address in a good location uh they're gonna see you as being more legit with a legit address instead of a p.o box if you start getting into marketing and digital marketing and you want to get on google maps and you want to start geofencing or geotargeting or any of that shit related to marketing um, even on your website, you have to put your, to, to start being relevant in the eyes of the algorithm, you have to have an address in the footer of your website. Exactly. You also want to have one, um, you know, a few other places on the website that we'll talk about SEO another day. Um, so you have to have an address if you want to start ranking, you don't want PO box written at the bottom of your website. So, or if you are, uh, let's say you're a Sugarland. I always say carpet cleaning company for whatever reason that always comes to mind. If you're a Sugarland carpet cleaning, don't get a freaking box in the middle of Houston and then start paying somebody to do SEO because it's going to be geo targeting your location to whatever that zip code is, not here in Sugarland. Mm -hmm. So be mindful. Um, yes, you need one. Don't use your house, but be mindful. Get it close to you or at least where you're mainly doing business at. Perfect. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for that. And then location setup, absolutely just as important. Thank you for listening. Yeah, just as important <laughs> as the phone number setup. So let's close it out with talking about apps and software. So let me hit apps first. Okay. Uh, what's the difference? You so tell you me know what? I'm, I'm going to go. What, I'm gonna what is, go. no, you tell me, what's the difference, the difference between, between an app and, and a software? software? You're the geek. You're, you're, you're putting me on the spot. On yeah, that. I am. What's let's, the let's difference? Get, let's get tie in here though, real quick. <laughs> Maybe he can help me out on that one. I'm going to go lifeline. But you know what? Actually, here let me let me, let me start with the first one. I'm going to do a product endorsement. You talk to, you talk about some some softwares and products. I'm going to do an endorsement here because I've been loving his ClickUp, ClickUp Dude. project management software. I think you best Bro. described it as if Monday and Basecamp had a baby. I, straight up, it, I mean it's I used when you get into so what is it considered a CRM or CMS or uh, it's a project, project management, management project management. So ClickUp's who we use for project management now. Um, it is a fluid way of managing projects, assigning tasks. I mean, it is extremely robust, any of them. And it is one of the things that I recommend any business have. You know, there's Salesforce and there's a bu project bubble and there's a bunch of cheap ones out there. There's a, And this is, uh, I think it's less than 100 bucks a month um, for ClickUp, I think. Sounds about right, somewhere around there. <laughs> and I don't, I think you get up to like five users or something in that $70 range or shit. Don't quote me on it. We can pull it up later. Y'all can pull it up. Um, but it is managing your project. So I use, when you get into, like, it's like, I don't want to use that term. I was going to say, when you get into bed with somebody, <laughs> 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 when it, it's true though, when you get into bed with one of these uh, project management yeah. softwares, it's a commitment. You know, going, at, you're setting, you're resetting up one of ours right now for us. Mm -hmm. When you get into setting that up, it is tedious work because yeah. you have to set it up the right way 
so that it functions and that people are actually going to use it. If you do it half-assed, people are going to use it half-assed. It's absolutely freaking pointless. So if you're going to use it and invest into it, use it right. It will make your life so easy, so streamlined and automated. There's so much automation in there to where there's folders we have. And you know this, but this is for the audience where it's got a list of my 20 to do. So every day when I come in, I open up my computer. It tells me exactly what to do in what order of doing it. If anything needs to be prioritized, it will jump up the list because whoever assigns that to it. There's also an area in there for our, uh, our client resource. What do we call it? Client center. Mm -hmm. There's a client center in there where we have links where our clients can upload files. You know, if we need to get logos from them or files or content, they can do all that shit. Um, I keep you looking at him or we run out of time. I don't no, care. No, we're good. good. Uh, you can upload files. You can upload logos. You can upload. You can share files through there as well as what we also do for our clients is that's where we keep our data visualization for people to see reports. So it's a great way for me to manage my projects and tasks and manage micromanage all of the staff and make sure everybody's on point. It holds people accountable. Uh, you can timestamp it to see how long it takes people to do anything. It's automated. So when Hector gets done, it automatically notifies Kareem to go do X, Y, Z. I mean, it is freaking amazing. So but you have to set it up right on the front end. Otherwise, none of that shit works and it's pointless and nobody's going to use it and it's a waste of time and money. So when I first started, I remember using, and that's why I came up with Project Bubble, because uh, I actually used them a long time ago because it was cheap. It was like 20 bucks a month. And it worked a little bit for a little while. Who I don't even know if they're still around. Doesn't or sound familiar to if me. They're, they could be a huge company. They could have got bought out. Who knows? Um I started, one of the first ones I started with, with Jay Weiss was, I mean, this is just over the last two years. We started with Monday and the way my brain works, it took me probably a good month, six weeks thinking about it hardcore to sit there and build that out for the staff to follow. And I couldn't get the staff to use it until it was done. So that was like, all right, before I go focus on anything else in business, I'm setting this shit up, I'm doing it right. And then the staff's going to follow it. Mm-hmm. And I got four weeks into it and I got it about 75% there and it didn't fully get used as I was saying earlier, but it also, it was, it just, it was missing some things that I really wanted. And, um, Andreas, uh, who's our media buyer. And I think it was Kristen who used to work with us. Uh, my content writer really liked Basecamp. So after, Building this platform on Monday for six months, uh, six weeks, getting the staff trained and learned to it for six months. It really just wasn't where we finally got it to 100% completion, but nobody was using it. It was missing some things. It was a pain in the ass. It didn't work right. And then so we jumped to base camp. So that's uh, who a few of my people told me that they used before and to try it out. So same thing took another four to six and actually it was a little bit more seamless we were able to copy everything over but base camp was really good at certain things that monday wasn't and vice versa and i was like man if somebody merged these two freaking things together and then after six months of monday six months of base camp somehow i found ClickUp, and it is the perfect marriage of those two it's beautiful and it's been amazing since so if you're looking for a project management software Hands down, bar none, the baddest fucking one on the planet is ClickUp.com. Uh, and no, they're not paying me for this, but hopefully one day they will. Uh, they absolutely should. And, and the reason why I love it too is because I'm a student of working in a type of agile style, style marketing, working at Scrum. I know you've heard me talk about that a couple of times. And the reason why I like it is being able to handle, you know, a large variety of tasks or even just, you know, breaking down tasks into a, uh, a digestible form. And then having that data kind of visualization in front of you, being able to schedule with people, getting people um, excited about the process and then adopt it in. Because, you know, that's part of the problem, like you said, is it's not just setting it up, but getting people to adopt it. So um, ClickUp really lends itself to being so user friendly, like you talked about the automation. So, man, they really should be paying us for this <laughs> spy right now. I'm not even going to lie. But, but ClickUp, absolutely check it out. Um, so, so. CRMs. Let's talk about CRMs real quick, okay? Because we okay. talked about apps. Just let's close out real quick on a CRM. Salesforce. Gosh, I use HubSpot. I mean, 
Where do we go? What is that? Customer resource management? Relationship management. Customer guess, relations. Yeah. Always get CRM and tool. CMS mixed up. Custom, yeah, then that's that's a content management system. But then there, then you got HubSpot, who's got a CRM and CMS. I don't know. Let's let's get yeah, into that. Yeah, it's though. all, all these that. acronyms are it is what it is. Um So is it Salesforce? Is that where everybody should go? For this is for customer management. You know, it's it, it's kind of industry based a little bit. Uh I've also um you know, nowadays also there's a lot of niche specific CRMs. Um, so if you're in a specific service, uh, if you're in roofing, there's a lot of roofing CRMs that you can use okay. that are tailored to that. Or if you're in a carpet cleaning, they're tailored to that. You're in the car business, they're tailored to that. So there are a lot of industry specific um, customer management systems. Uh, I personally like to use Active Campaign. That's what we use, right? Active campaign. That's what it's called. Don't <laughs> <laughs> right? Isn't it? Hopefully, hopefully. It's a uh, right. Am I right? All right. Cool. Shit. Well, I, didn't, I was. I don't know why I was thinking Active Track. Active Track is actually a different software that I use for. Uh, that's a good one. Active Track. It allows you to monitor all of the monitors uh, within your office, so you can spy on your staff. So we have that running right now. Yeah, it's on all your computers. Oh, okay. In case you didn't know. <laughs> um, Keep 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 y'all honest. Uh, so I was getting an active track and active campaign uh, confused. So active campaign is who we use, and the reason why we do, do that is it really is gears or lends itself towards um, automation. So I have like all of my different clients have at least one list in my active campaign account because okay. we do retargeting and remarketing. So it re it allows you to do automated newsletter series. So I control and manage all of my staff in there. I'm sorry, all of my clients in there and keep notes on them and tasks and everything. And then I also manage all of the automation that we do. So, you know, when I have a roofing client and we're sending out, you know, we're, we're running their campaigns and every lead we get goes into our automated newsletter series where then they're, they're there in a series of 50 emails that get sent to them once a week for 52 weeks. That's one series that they get. So that's one list that I have for my client. And then we'll have a separate list for people that convert. As soon as uh, whoever's in that automated newsletter series converts to a sale, then they go into a different automation to where it's now this is our client automation. So what we do is then we only touch them once a month because we don't want to flood them with a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. And it's always good, just good quality content or letting them know about our warranties or our insurances or this or that or follow-up services or uh, maintenance or things they need to be doing because they are already a client. But it pulls them from one list. Once they convert to a sale, brings them to another list, and then we can retarget to them with more automated newsletters. So with our style of marketing and running business for ourselves as well as our clients, we do a ton of automated systems and newsletter series and retargeting and remarketing campaigns. So active campaign, I think it's less, it's, they're all a hundred bucks a month or less. That's who we use um, for our project management. But I've used Salesforce. Okay. Uh, and I think that get in was like 500 a month. They're expensive. As oh, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's just one system. There's, I mean, they're the biggest out there. They've got more integration opportunities than you can imagine. Um, there's a lot of them. Uh, what is Zendesk? Is that one? Or is that more no, of a, a customer service customer service, management? Yeah. Yeah. HubSpot's one to definitely check out. They have, um, you can set it up for free. You don't get the CMS for free, but you can get the CRM tool for free. So it's definitely something to look at. And then naturally you could look at Zapier for any type of integrations, as, as you know. You yeah. yeah. Zapier, you know, I don't like, uh, Zapier, ta it takes a little bit, a little, little, little bit of tech knowledge. That's true. That's to true. learn Zapier. Fair enough. Fair enough. And if somebody's this new in business, it's, it's amazing. I mean, go look at it. Everybody needs to know what Zapier is. You're going to be mm -hmm. using it sooner or later. Um, but just getting started in business, I'd keep Zapier out of the list. I don't want to start confusing people. Good call. Good call. All right, man. Well, man, we've, uh, I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. All right, cool. Well, I mean, there's a lot of other things in setting yep. up a business that you need to take into consideration. Um, it all depends, you know, it's dependent on your industry or your business model. Are you a service? Are you a storefront? Are you a home office? Do you need permits? Do you need merchant services? Do you need e-commerce? I mean, there's a million things that we didn't cover, uh, but the nuts and bolts and, and the most important thing to take from this is have a solid foundation. Make sure you follow your accounting. Accounting we really didn't dive into. 
Um, you know, we use QuickBooks, but accounting and, and monitoring and managing your P and L's, your profit and loss statements, seeing where your money is going is everything. I mean, I was just talking to, I won't call them out, but I was just talking to a couple guys, uh, a week ago or so when I was at their store and they only see their books once a year when the accountant files for them. And this is important. So if it takes a few more minutes, so be it. Cool. Cool. Good with you. Uh, Accounting is everything. You need to know every single month what you're spending, what your expenses are, what your overhead is, what your income is. There's no way for you to prioritize or know what type of budgets you have for the following months or quarters or years if you're not monitoring and analyzing your budgets on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And when you print out a P&L, a profit and loss statement, uh, and for those that don't know what that is, and for the ones that do, sorry, I like to dummy shit down, uh, a P&L is going to show you every single thing you spend money on. And then it's going to show you all your money coming in. So you can see your money coming in. I had 100 grand come in, and I spent $80,000 on all this shit. So I got 20 grand left. Well, that's your net profit for the month. You made 20 grand. Well, you know that. So you can decide next month, okay, well, if next month follows this month, then I'm going to make another 20 grand next month. You can forecast. Or you can say, well, shit, we made 20 grand. Let's take 10 of that and stick it into some of these marketing and advertising campaigns. And let's try to take it from a $20,000 profit next month to a thirty or $40,000 profit next month. So you need to be able to start forecasting. You need to know your numbers, your profits. You need to see what your expenses are. You might realize that, damn, I'm spending $400 a month and it'll also let you find mistakes. You know, it, it's Comcast. What do we pay? Shit. 300 bucks a month for uh, our high speed internet here. So if I'm used to looking at our P and L's every single month and it's 300 every single month. And then one time I'm analyzing it and it says 600, it's like, well shit, they double billed me. Yeah. Let me call them and see what's going on. Uh, so it will help you find mistakes or overcharges. So it's auditing your books at the same time so that you're not making overpayments. Um, you might see that on there's your payroll and your staffing. It's like, damn, I didn't realize I'm spending 50 grand a month on staff and that's eating into my profit. So maybe if I gave three people more responsibilities, got rid of two people that aren't really performing or up to par, they've been pissing me off anyways. Well, maybe that'll help me make an extra $10,000 a month in profits. Or if it's vehicle related or expenses, let's just say, you know, my, uh, Martin, first choice roofing. What's up, buddy? Um, let's just say he's got his trucks on the road and he, you know, he gives all of his guys, they've got, I don't know, 10 or 20 trucks out there driving. And if he, on his P and L's, he sees that he's paying, you know, it's like his gas bills, 1200 bucks ish every month. And then all of a sudden one month, his gas bills, 1800. It's like, well, what's this $500 jump. Mm -hmm. And then he can go reverse engineer that and figure out if somebody took a trip or somebody's siphoning gas out the side or, you know, right. somebody's trying to take advantage. So knowing your books and looking at them on a monthly basis is amazing what it can do. So you have to have accounting and I don't, you don't have to use QuickBooks if it's too hard for you to figure out and they've made it pretty damn easy. Now, I don't care if you do it in a spreadsheet. But know what your books are. I like to do mine monthly. Uh, quarterly is okay. You know, some of us get busy. Or if you're not doing enough business to where it's like, I only need to look at it quarterly because I'm not that big yet. That's fine. Um, but do your books. Do your accounting. Know exactly what your expenses are versus your overheads. So you can see your profits. You can see your losses. You can do forecasting for the long term. QuickBooks is who we use. Um, and that's what's up. So anyhow, what I want people to take from this whole podcast today is your infrastructure, your foundation, set it up right, invest into it. It sucks. It can get expensive. I mean, the shit that we, we probably, I mean, just what we talked about was probably 500 to 1,000 bucks in softwares and apps and third-party shit. Right. That's expensive when you're getting into business. I mean, it, it even was for me when I started this business and, I was, and it's like, damn, I got to pay for something else on a monthly uh, I, I think now we're probably up to three grand a month just in these type of apps and third party softwares and bullshit that we pay for. But it truly ends up uh, giving us a return because it automates our processes. It streamlines it. It makes us more efficient. It makes us better. It makes us communicate better. So in the long run, it's going to help you. 
Um, start small, work your way up, but definitely have a strong ass foundation and set it up right from the beginning. It'll help you grow and scale your business faster. Wise words, wise words. So like you said, today we covered the administrative setup. Um, little, just a little, little teaser next week. What are we going to talk about, man? Um, so I'm kind of breaking this into what the Jay Weiss course is going to be. Okay. The jweissuniversity.com course, not there yet. It's coming, guys. I promise. Be on the uh, lookout. Yeah. Uh, give, me, give me three to six months. I promise it's going to be live, and I know we're shooting for three. Um, i just too busy making sure my clients are making a lot of damn money and uh, keeping them happy. So I always put my own shit on the back burner, take care of my clients. So if my clients are listening, I'm taking care of y'all. Um, I'm breaking this down first into the same quadrants that we're doing for our course. So the first thing we're doing uh, in our J Weiss course is teaching administrative setup and everything we discussed today, as well as a list of probably 20 other things that we didn't cover are going to be in the course where we tell people exactly what they are, uh, what they're about, how to use them, which ones we suggest. We'll have these podcasts where we talk about it. Uh, so the first one's administrative setup. Mm hmm. The next one that we'll be talking about next week is market research. Okay. So market research, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, competitive analysis, how to research your products. Is it industry saturated? You know, really diving in and looking at all the different aspects about researching a market or a business model. You know, it's like I make great cupcakes. I want to do a cupcake business. They taste so yummy. Mm. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, Johnny's Cupcakes, but there's 30 other cupcake companies right. within a one mile radius. Your profit margin is only 20 cents a cupcake. How many freaking cupcakes do you have to sell to make a profit? Yeah, you might be able to sell a thousand cupcakes a month. It's like, okay, great. You sold a thousand cupcakes. You made 20 cents per. So here's your 200 bucks for a month of busting your ass making the best cupcakes in the world, but you can't make no damn money because you got so much competition. There's other people, so you got to sell it at a lower price, and you just made 200 bucks, and your overhead was 5000 right. So you actually lost $4,800 on your kitchen. You know, so market research is so important before just because you're good at something or you like, you like bicycles doesn't mean you go open up a bike shop. You know, it, whatever it is, you need to do market research to figure out if a business model is going to be viable. Now, if you want to do a bike shop and it's saturated here, but it's not across town and you're diehard and you're passionate and you want to do a freaking bike shop, well, then you go do market research to figure out where is the best location for you to open a bike shop. So not going to dive in more. We'll get into that next week. Perfect. All right. Well, that's what we're talking about next week. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Aaron Morales hosting Jay Weiss Live. Jonathan. Great talk. Yeah, appreciate y'all tuning in. Love you guys. I hope, you know, again, the purpose of this, if I can give y'all one little nugget, one little nugget, if I can give one person one nugget, that's the purpose of this. I love you guys. Y'all always are here to tune in and take care of us. This is for you. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Y'all have a great and safe weekend. See you soon. Have a good one, guys.